and that's a real problem as children get older and get more and more connected to the pop culture box. Then this is the craze. This week, four different people sent me an email about Miss, uh, Miss um, and I have to type over here, MissBimbo.com, um, which um, is very much, you, these are some of the highlights, but in, one of the things you can do is re online resort to meds and plastic surgery. Stop at nothing to become the reigning bimbo in addition to all the shopping. And this was sent to me the same week that I talked to reporters in Florida about this young woman at 18 who died from having breast implant surgery. What is it coming to that girls at 18 feel in order to be their ideals, this is what they need to do and have the resources to do it? But then the tragedies that result, obviously this is not typical, but it's pretty profound. What about boys? They're taught, as girls are taught, being pretty, just being, you know, how they look and what they buy determines their value. We have boys that being tough and macho and ready to fight is what determines their value. Not needing to rely on anyone, having big muscles, pow, bang, you know, pull the blaster, trigger. Um, professional wrestling, which kind of then leads, lures younger boys into, and into things that older boys and men are involved with. Um, this is the current line. It was in part through protests that happened around wrestler, these kinds of toys being marketed to four-year-olds that's led now to the eight-year-old label. But as you'll hear in a minute, it doesn't make a huge amount of difference. And then there's the sexualization where violence and sex are linked together which is a terrible worry because it's teach as kids are being taught that they're objects and to treat each other as objects, they're also getting models that sex is linked to violence so that it's much easier to get involved in sex linked to violence when you're very much caught up in being an object and looking right and acting right and judging yourself and others that way. Um, and then we have... Um, this was two sides of a, of a McDonald's Happy Meal box a few years ago. So that, and we know one in five McDonald's burgers is sold with a Happy Meal. This is what children were getting. But on the other side of the box, we had the new He-Man TV show that had been re-released. And what it's saying, you know, that girls and boys have nothing to do with each other from the youngest ages. And boys have to kind of, when they, I mean, parents, whether they resist the television show or not, they go to McDonald's and this is what their children get. And then we have pretend meeting real, which we know makes the whole thing even harder. You know, when, when you're playing, people say, well, that's not the same. Kids know how to suspend reality, which we could argue about. But then we have things like the pussycat doll dolls that Hasbro was going to release a couple years ago and was one of the great successes of Campaign for Commercial Free Childhood up to that point, based on the Pussycat Doll uh, burlesque group that every adolescent I talk to knows about and they're highly sexualized group. When you get dolls that say, when you play, you're supposed to imitate all that sexualized behavior and luring kids into imitating and, and finding out more about the rock group or the burlesque group. It makes it even more internalized into their behavior that this is how they're supposed to be. Here's another way pretend meets real. Um, Four-year-old, someone said seven-year-old bras? Uh-uh, four years old. And this was from a year ago. It's probably down to three by now. You, this was from Target. You can walk into any mass market store and you have padded bra, under bikini underpants sets for children. And someone mentioned, you know, toddlers. This was a shirt that was being marketed to boys, boy babies, the parents of boy babies. And it tells you how desensitized parents can become because they've been growing up in this culture. We now have second generation deregulation parents who grew up with the things I'm talking about. So I mentioned the objectification of self and others, and as I, it's, you know, some of you may know a lot of my work earlier was on violence and media violence and violence in the world and how it affects children, and it's much harder to write about sex 
than violence because we all agreed violence is bad and the world isn't doing a good job with it, but we all want to try to create a world where there's less violence and find other ways to solve problems. But we don't want to teach four-year-olds that sex is bad. But how do you teach a four-year-old the kinds of lessons to undermine what's going on in the media? And what I realized is what children need to learn is that the, they need to learn about caring, connected relationships when they're young so that when they grow up, they can have caring, connected relationships in which sex is a part. So when you think about what should young children be learning, they need to be learning a lot about relationships, but instead, they have less, more time in front of the screen, and the content they're learning when they're in front of a screen is how you look to be an object, to dress yourself like an object, to judge others as objects, and so it's setting up a situation that's perfect for what we're hearing happening with teens and tweens where they're having friends with benefits, where they're having sexual experiences in the absence of relationship, and they even say they don't want relationships yet. Um, just another example, this Halloween, there, you know, what's going on again. When you can dress up to be the whore, then you're more likely to internalize the behavior of the whore. And last but not least is Club Libby Lou. When this isn't last, I'm sorry. Um, Club Libby Lou, which is owned by Saks Fifth Avenue, it's at the fancy malls around the country, growing really exponentially. You can be, a, you can get a makeover at four for your birthday party. You, they teach you how to wiggle down the runway like a model. They teach you how to do pinup poses, and this is what we're teaching our girls. And then you can go and get, um, go to spas and get your nails done and get complete makeovers there. And I, I mean, this age compression is a serious problem that we need to think about. Because when kids get involved in things older people or, or youth used to do, they don't have the development ability to understand it. And so they get the form, but not the substance. Not that I'm advocating this for anybody, but when children are involved, it becomes a really serious issue. And it leads to things like Cosmo Girl having stories like here's ten ways that are five ways to kiss. Not once in the article do they mention relationships. It's just knowing the right way to kiss so boys like you. The price is huge. They struggle to figure out what they see and hear. And they don't have the tools to do that. Here's an example. A child who in, in his kindergarten class made a picture um, that said, um, and he wrote all these W's and the teacher said, tell me about your picture. And he said, it's a professional wrestling girl with big boobies. The teacher's initial reaction, as most teachers would be, is we don't do talk about things like that at school. But I'm arguing we have to think about ways to connect with kids around this issue at school. And what this teacher said was, well, what do you know about wrestling girls? And the boy said he saw it the night before for the first time with his big brother who was babysitting, and his brother thought he was being cool. Did your parents know? No, it was a secret. And so he was afraid to tell his parents, and my theory is he came to this teacher who he trusted and wanted to try to raise it with her because he was scared and didn't know whether it was okay, but he couldn't tell his big brother either because he wanted to be cool like his big brother. Um, they don't think the way we do. Um, there was a boy, um, who said to a girl in class, I want to have sex with you. And he was suspended, or he was going to be suspended. The parents, the girl told her parents, the boy's parents were called in. They finally sent her to the school counselor. And as she was there, um, they, the, the counselor said, well, what do you, you know, tell me what you wanted to do to her. And he burst into tears and said, I like her. I wanted to give her a kiss. I wanted her to know I like her. And he was, you know, traumatized. But so adults react. We do this to children. And then when they're trying to figure it out and do things that make perfect sense, given what they're exposed to, we punish them. Zero tolerance policies are a disaster when it comes to these issues with children, especially when they're young. Gene will talk more about it when they get older.